Hello and welcome to episode 15 of the Knitting Teaspoon podcast. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm Lisbeth, your host, and this is a podcast which is mostly about knitting, but, well, that's not really true this week. Uh, I've been sewing, I've been hand dyeing yarn, um, no spinning this week, no crocheting, no nothing else, just knitting and a lot of sewing and some hand dyeing. So, um, yeah. Today is May 25, um, and summer is really coming in the Netherlands. Um, I live in the south, and we have been on a bit of a nasty weather part. Like, the so southern half of Europe has been worse weather than the northern part of Europe. Uh, so we had a lot of thunderstorms, which I really enjoy watching. Uh, I, I really like it to see the lightning strikes. I like to stay inside, um, but I, I really like watching it. Um, uh, but now it's really getting hot outside. Um, yeah, so I think that's maybe why the knitting has dropped down a little bit and there's been more uh, sewing, but there's been a bit of both. So let's get right into the episode and I would like to start with what I'm wearing. And most of you guys will probably um, remember this top because I've uh, worn it I think a few times before uh, this is an Agnes top so uh, this is a pattern by Tilly and the Buttons the, the sewing shirt that I'm wearing and then on top of it I'm wearing a hand knit top uh, I can't tell you uh, what the name of the pattern is or anything because I designed it myself last year and I never got around to um, really writing up the pattern so I have a lot of detailed notes on how to make this top but I never written down the pattern and I want to tweak it a little bit if I ever want to make it into a pattern but I basically really like this top it's out of um, some baby alpaca and silk blend yarn lace weight I bought it at uh, Lietet Nisten, uh, a store in Stockholm. Uh, they had hand dyed the yarn themselves, so I don't think the, the yarn is in any way uh, repeatable. Um, but I, I really love this yarn and it's a really nice and bright pop of pink and blue. Some leftover fabric from what I've been sewing this morning. So, uh, yeah. That's what I'm wearing. Uh, one, one fun thing on this top, it's, it's really basic and simple, but there is um, a lace detail on the back. So I don't know, I don't think I can really show you because I think my hair is right about on the level uh, where, where the lace pattern is, but there's a really fun little lace detail there. And uh, yeah. That, that's basically it. Oh, and for those of you who think that I never talk about crochet, well, there's a crochet edge on this top. And I wish I'd also done it on the bottom of this top, but I first thought that um, an I-cord edge would be the way to go. So I did that on the bottom part and I did not really like the look of it. It is a bit wonky and it's probably because the way I try to do the I-cord is nothing wrong with the technique itself. But it just didn't really work for me, so I decided to do something else on top and I made this scalloped edge and I really like this part uh, of the edge. It does not entirely prevent it from rolling in on, on the shoulder straps, but it's fine, it works, it stays on, that's the most important thing. So uh, that's what I'm wearing, so let's get right into what I've been up to this week. Um, I would say that I would like to start with a knitting project, but it is in a bag that you have never seen before because I made it this week. So we'll start with a bit of sewing and it's a finished object right away. And it's this huge bag. It's really enormous and I don't know, I don't really know what I was thinking, like why I would need such a huge bag. Um, but for those of you who are wondering, uh, my blanket is in here, so there's kind of a reason why I thought I needed a, a huge bag and I still have some yarn stash down here for my blanket that's not in this bag, so maybe I can fill up this blanket, but I feel like 
if I were to maybe at some point make a matching pillow cover and fill it up with a pillow and would still fit in this bag because it's really huge. So basically I had this much of the red and white gingham uh, fabric left over. Um, I've made a lot of pillows uh, out of this fabric and then also in a green and a yellow uh, uh, version. Uh, so they're on my couch. Um, and I thought it would be fun to um, to use the leftovers to make a project bag and this is of course leftover fabric that you've seen from the dress that I was wearing I think two weeks ago uh, I think it's a Françoise uh, dress or maybe it's three weeks ago I don't know it doesn't really matter actually but I was wearing a Françoise dress out of this fabric and I thought it was a lot of fun and it I think this red and white fabric goes well with anything so yeah I, I think it's a lot of fun to have this bag and I made a, a little detail here like a little piping detail here and I really like doing that so I think I will do that again at some point um, yeah so finished project bag and inside is a project who would have thought so here is the blanket um, and it seems like there's still one row missing like here there, there could fit one more square in here and that for an entire row but I had already knit this square uh, before and this is like the same size as 16 little squares which would fit in one row uh, so this is the equivalent of that row and I had that already finished uh, so that was the halfway point for my blanket and uh, this week I've been doing some more uh, pretty mindless knitting on it and I've reached uh, this far so there's almost another uh, border square uh, finished from my blanket so yeah there's been quite a bit of progress I, I really like how fast this square went I mean I was still working on on the the inner squares um, earlier this week or since last Friday I, I call that a week I don't know when you guys usually say that the week starts for me the first day of the week is usually uh, a Monday and the Sunday would be the last day of the week but uh, I know not everyone thinks the same <laughs> about uh, which day is the first one in the week but if I talk about the week it's usually um, on this podcast it's usually since last Friday so that's when I last broadcasted so yeah uh, this one came to be as as well um, so this is not quite an entire square yet because uh, th this is a, a three square wide um, thing and this one is almost halfway uh, or maybe even slightly over halfway and then there needs to be a four square wide one this direction so this is uh, a log cabin style ish um, well blanket piece and I knit the border out of these um, these squares so you will see that here in the border uh, in the edge of the blanket I also have these log cabin square things so it's six by six log of those bare log cabin squares white this is probably not going to make any sense, but uh, I, maybe I, I might uh, try and see if I can uh, take a picture of my blanket and then put that one in so that you guys will have a bit more of an overview of what it's actually looking like. Um, because this way you will never see the entire blanket because it just doesn't fit because it's so big. So that's been the progress on my blanket and uh, it, it now lives in in this uh, huge project bag you will see that there's a smaller project bag my other one you know the one with the enamel pins uh, is living in there and I keep uh, like the 10 colors of my blanket uh, I keep them in the smaller project bag and then uh, I keep a smaller project bag in a project some project bag exception crazy <laughs> I know but yeah um, not not planning on uh, really carrying 
the larger project bag around uh, so much so um, n for now it will probably hold the larger blanket piece, be piece because I don't need to carry this around anymore to work on it for until I finish I think at least four more um, blanket squares uh, like the, the edge squares uh, or maybe all I don't know how, how many would it be like six plus four would be ten squares but I've already finished one one and a half so like slightly more than eight of those squares to go before I really have to work on it as a in blanket size again so I don't need to carry this around uh, for, for much longer uh, except then that it's a lot of fun to show it to people like at, at my knit group people are always amazed to see um, how the blanket is growing and uh, it's a lot of fun to show so um, yeah I'm bringing that one around so yeah, the blanket goes back into uh, the huge bag um, uh, I, I think of finishing it with with some straps so that it will be slightly easier to carry it uh, I, I think it's too huge to carry a lot but I, I think maybe if I can find some like broad um, red straps and then just sew them on like here with a loop and um, like you know with the handle and then on the other side as well uh, that would probably work for, for this bag so might do that at some point don't know when it's not a top priority because it's mostly just being around the house so then there's been one more knitting project that has seen some love again this week and it's been on hold for uh, a little while uh, because I just didn't have the brain space to work on it uh, it wasn't with me on the first day in the hospital uh, when my boyfriend was there um, but with everything that's been happening I did not really have a lot of brain space to work on it but now it has seen a little bit more love and I think it's grown about half a pattern repeat so uh, I'm in a bit of a nasty point to show you guys the pattern repeat but on the foot here you can see uh, that it's quite a long pattern repeat I, I think it's around 20 five-ish rows it's probably an even number but I don't know by head what number it would be maybe 25 is long I don't I don't know anyway I think 25 would be about right because I usually have like 55 rows in a foot before I start doing the heel increases so it's probably around 25 um, and uh, the rows are quite long because the color work is not as stretchy as I had wished so usually my stitch count in socks is uh, 60 uh, stitches um, on the foot and on the leg but I do al always have a tiny bit of a mini heel flap and gusset thing although in this, these socks I left out heel flap I only have a gusset uh, which increases for for the leg um, I know this sounds a bit strange but <laughs> because it's not so stretchy this way it fits over my ankle and um, the the yarn will be or the fabric will be stretched out quite a bit over the foot and then it will be slightly looser around the ankles so that that's fine for me uh, I can imagine that people might think that's strange but um, I like my socks to be able to be worn in shoes um, for me there's no point in knitting socks that won't go in, in, in shoes because I tend to wear shoes when I go outside. Who, who, who knew? Who knew? Uh, but you know, um, I, 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 um, I really like it to be fitted around the foot and then whatever happens on my leg is not that important. I, I, of course I like my socks to stay up but um, it's not as important as the fit right around the foot because that that determines whether or not I can use them inside shoes. So there's been a teeny tiny bit of progress and I probably should pop, pop in um, a progress keeper somewhere in, in the row where I'm now for next week because I think this will see a little bit more love uh, this week. But 
Who knows? Who knows? So apart from that, I've been um, working on some yarn dyeing because I started doing that and I really liked it and it's been on hold for a little while uh, at f first actually um, well my, my boyfriend got admitted to the hospital when he was coughing at blood and at first we didn't know why this was happening um, but it was right in a week when I had started uh, using hand dye to uh, and dye yarn and I knew that uh, yarn dyes can be toxic so you can imagine that the, the first week, like the first evening when he was admitted to the hospital, um, yeah, we were really trying to find out what the toxic uh, parts would be of the, the dyes that we were using. And there is really no relation between what happened to my boyfriend and, um, and uh, the dyes that I used, but still, uh, it's, I didn't feel quite right so um, my sister she's in chemistry and um, she knows a lot about how to find these toxicology reports on uh, different materials so that you know what kind of problems that these chemicals might cause and uh, together with her we have been searching um, to find this information and it turns out that um, this these uh, toxic chemicals in, in the dye are really not that dangerous, especially um, the, the, the dyes can be toxic, but, uh, so you should not eat them and I don't use anything that I use for dyeing, for preparing food or anything, but um, and there's a, a tiny problem when you can inhale these uh, things but that's usually when you use them in powdered form and I don't use them in powdered form. Well uh, I decided not to uh, dye uh, yarn with uh, the the powdered form but uh, in a soft form so it's already um, a solution in I, I believe it's mostly water um, which is less dangerous to you so um, I had thought about it before but then crazy things started happen uh, happening and it was quite clear that it was with the I think it's called respiratory system so um, yeah <laughs> that was quite shocking uh, luckily it, it did not have anything to do with with what happened to my boyfriend because it was a tumor and could never have grown uh, within a week and um, so that's not that bad, I guess. Um, for those of you who don't know anything about what happened to my boyfriend, I talk about it quite a bit more. Um, I think two episodes uh, before this one, because that's right when he got admitted in the hospital and any everything. Um, but I don't want to go into too much detail uh, about that now. He's doing fine and uh, we decided to start dyeing some yarn again and we wanted to go for some green. So this is what it turned out like and I really love the color. I must admit that at first I was kind of scared that um, it would be much more blue than uh, we were aiming for so um, I added some yellow while it was already in in the pot uh, taking a dye so you can see these more goldish specks at some points um, throughout this skein and I in hindsight I wish I hadn't done that because I think it looked it turned out fine the way it is and these yellow specks they don't really add that much but they're not very ugly either so um, yeah I'm quite happy with with this one it, it really quite turned out the way I wanted to the next way is game completely didn't so I was trying a new technique uh, called dip dyeing and I wanted to make a skein that was like a full rainbow so I looked up how to make uh, a like golden yellow, like slightly more to the orange side of yellow 
and uh, bright red and a blue one. And I was hoping to get uh, like a part that would be bright yellow and a part that would be bright uh, red and then in between some some gorgeous orange colors then there were like the mix between those colors and then similar to the blue I would also get um, a purple and a green section well this is what it turned out like so I knew right away that I had made a mistake because um, I started with dyeing uh, the supposed to be yellow well, as you can see, there's not really any yellow going on here. It turned out this bright orange. And I do think it's a gorgeous color, but it's totally not what I was aiming for. And then I um, I started dyeing the red. And I think this, this color turned out quite all right. Like this is, this is quite what I was aiming for. I, I will untangle the skein, although I, I really like the way it's wound right now. I, I think I did an okay job for someone who doesn't do this <laughs> on a very regular basis. Um, but you can see these these red colors, they are quite gorgeous. Although you can see that the dye did not go completely even across the skein. Uh, that's, that's probably some beginner stuff with the hand dyeing. But I really like uh, the color anyway. And then the last part was um, dipped into um, a purple dye bed and uh, yeah this color turned out quite gorgeous as well but it was supposed to be blue and <laughs> it's purple so um, this one I'm not really sure if I actually really did not mix the colors properly because I started with dyeing uh, the yellow part so I had the skein and then I would dip it like well you can see that now the orange part is um, on the lower part of the skein and then I would dip it into the water which would already be close to boiling point at that point so it's kind of risky because you don't want to uh, change temperature too rapidly in yarn uh, because it can felt at, at that point but I was dipping it in, in the boiling acid water and uh, hoping to like like slowly dipping it slightly further each time so the first time the lowest bit takes up the mo most eye and then you will see that there's orange going up all the way to here well actually it's slightly higher but there you will see other colors too so you can definitely see that well on this part it's most clear um, that uh, the lower part took up more dye than the higher part and that was kind of the idea because th this way the colors would blend um, but then uh, probably not all of the orange dye went out of the water I think it ran quite clear after the orange part and then I uh, threw in the the red dye in, in the same dye pot I did not change the water or anything I just thought Let, let's get this over with um, and I thought some more more yellow in in the or orangey colors in the red won't do any harm and I know that um, yarn takes up red and yellow dyes a lot quicker than uh, it takes up blue dyes so that's what the logic behind dyeing the the blue section which turned out purple at uh, last but the dye bed definitely did not run entirely clear after um, dipping the yarn in the red dye pot so um, but I thought the color became quite saturated and it did not take up that much more dye um, with dipping it in the dye bed again so I did not want to like put in the entire skein in, in the dye bed to maybe take up more dye like using everything of the skein. It might have been able to take up more dye because if it's less concentrated then um, I think the skein does not really want to take up more concentration of dye than is in the dye bed right behind it. Probably doesn't make sense but and it might not even be right. I don't know. I'm not a professional so you know. Um, but I, I basically I was just impatient so I um, put in the blue dye uh, in, in the bath with what still looked quite um, quite red 
and then I started doing the same thing like slowly dipping it in and trying to make it purple and also this color it, it turned out lovely but it's nowhere near the color that I was planning on making so yeah still a gorgeous skein though uh, so I think these will make some gorgeous socks at some point but I don't know <laughs> it's just not what I expected but I'm really happy with it anyway so after this I um, decided to dry it and actually usually after I dye things I just let it sit in a dye pot in the entire skein and then just let it cool back to room temperature and then I rinse it with uh, some wool wash or, or soap uh, to get the excess dye out. I did not do that yet with this color so it might still uh, bleed quite a bit and change color uh, in that process. Um, but I didn't do that because I, I didn't want the purple to run all the way over uh, these gorgeous colors. So, um, yeah, I could not do that um, yet. So, another dye experiment and it was a lot of fun, but it, it turned out quite differently from what I expected. And now I can really see how yarn dyers have some problems with maybe repeating colorways at some point or inventing new colorways because I really expected this to be a bright rainbow and it totally did not um, turn out that way even though with the same system of uh, trying to decide colors I usually got quite a bit closer to the color that I expected to get um, than I did this time so I don't know it's probably a lot of trial and error before you get the perfect color. So, yeah. We will see. Anyway, so two skeins of hand dyed yarn. Yay! And um, apart from that, I've been doing quite a bit of sewing. So, I've already talked about my huge new project bag that I've made. Uh, the one for my blanket and um, yeah uh, that's not everything I've been sewing so I've also been trying to make new project bags in this style so this is again the Japanese knotted bag it's not finished so if you think it doesn't look quite neat uh, it's because I'm not finished doing it it needs some top stitching around the edge and the lining isn't, isn't closed yet, so um, it's definitely not finished yet, but it's um, also very close to being finished, so you can definitely see what it's going to look like. So these are the bags that um, you can close like this and then knit from the back um, while walking. And um, yeah, I've made... I'm in the process of making six of these bags. Now you might wonder, you, you probably don't need six of those bags, that's true. Um, but I really enjoy the process of making these and I'm kind of considering opening an Etsy store and maybe seeing if I can sell these project bags. Of course, they, they need some some more processing before they are able to sell, but. Maybe in a few days time I will open my Etsy store and, and see if I can sell these. So that's a thing that I think is very exciting. Um, I noticed uh, with everything that's happened over the last uh, few weeks um, that I do not have a lot of energy to spend on things. So um, my studies, they have completely fallen to the wayside and I really noticed that I've been struggling with my studies for quite some time and um, I'm not really sure if I want to continue doing my study because it feels like it takes so much more energy than that I get back from it and it, it feels scary to try to decide on finding another path for my life and I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with my life and I, I just don't know. It's it's, it's every everything's just a bit scary. Like making 
huge decisions um, and, and I just don't, don't know how I feel but I, I know that working on something like this and making project bags um, this gives me energy I really enjoy doing this uh, this is something that if I don't feel good I feel better after doing this and that's not the case with my studies at this point. At this point, I feel like when, when I start working on it, it completely drains my energy almost instantly and I just can't focus on it and it's difficult. So I, I, I just don't know at this point if I want to continue. And I'm not saying I'm quitting right away, but there there's some struggles there. I, I just don't know where to go in that sense at this point so maybe in a few weeks time I, I will know and I will be able to share a little bit more about this um, but for now I just don't know and I just wanted to try and see if this uh, could be something that I enjoy and um, yeah I'm just trying it so there's not an Etsy store yet, so I can't link to any Etsy store or anything. And please don't feel <laughs> like like I'm trying to sell you guys this. I'm just telling you that I'm working on it. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And I, I really like how, how these fabrics work together. So the, these balloons, they, they are just so cheerful. I, I really like it. And yeah, and the little stars on the inside. They make me so happy and, and then there's just some similar color but yeah, maybe not quite the same I don't know uh, some fabric here that I really like and there's five more identical ones to this one and there was one more out of the fabric that I used to make my own uh, bag here and now that I'm picking up this project bag that I've been using quite a bit over the last few weeks. I completely forgot that there's one more knitting project that I had to talk about. So these socks, and then we're very close to being finished, are now actually finished and uh, I've popped them in my bag in the hopes that I would completely finish them because, well, I, I call it finished once they're off the needles. but you can see that there's still some ends to weave in. So I've put them in uh, in my bag with with the darning needle to uh, finish those ends, but it never happened because there's so much more fun things to do in life than weaving in ends. At least that's, that's my vision on things, of course. You know, people work in different ways and they like different things, but Weaving in ants is just not one of my favorite things, but a finished pair of socks for, for my boyfriend, the hospital socks as I've called them. They are finished now, so yay! <laughs> Quite excited about it. So, um, yeah, I think that's everything that I wanted to talk about uh, this week. Um, so I would like to thank you so much for watching this episode it it really means a lot that um well that you guys take take the time to watch this and hear me blabber on on about everything i would like to apologize because apparently somewhere halfway uh recording this episode i had uh, pushed away my microphone um like i record the sound for this episode um on my camera um, because it automatically do, does this and I also record it uh, with a separate microphone with a separate microphone and um, somehow I must have pushed the button to end this recording and I uh, so I think the sound quality must have been bad <laughs> at some point in this episode but I can't really go back and change it or I can record everything again but I don't really feel like that so I'm not doing that so I hope you guys will be happy with the sound quality that you had um, uh, I will see in editing if it's doable maybe I will need to re-record something I, I don't know thank you so much for joining and uh, yeah I hope to see you uh, again next week so uh, have a lovely week and um, yeah.
see you next week.